Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, Boris FX updated Optics to Optics 2022. In today's video, I want to take a quick look at one of the new features found in this, the latest version of Boris FX Optics. Very quickly, Boris FX gave me a new discount code. I'll have that new discount code linked in the description below this video. Now, Boris FX Optics works as a standalone application. It also works as a plugin in Adobe Photoshop and Lightroom Classic. Today, I'm going to be using it as a plugin in Lightroom Classic. We're going to be working on this Adobe stock image. It's a nice image, kind of a wintry scene, but I want to jazz it up a bit, and that's where Optics 2022 will come in. I'm going to send it directly there by right clicking right on the image, going down to Edit In, and over and down to Boris Effects Optics 2022. You have the option to send the original file or a copy of that file. I'm going to send a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. I'm going to keep these default settings down here and click Edit. Now Lightroom is creating this TIFF file with those specifications. You can see in the top left-hand corner, there is a progress bar. Once it creates, creates that file, it will open that file up into Boris Effects Optics. And once we get in there, I'm just going to give you kind of a rough lay of the land. And then I'm going to show you the new feature we're going to be talking about. Now, when you use Boris Effects Optics 2022 as a standalone app or as a plugin in Photoshop or Lightroom, this is what it looks like. You have the image, of course, in the middle. Along the bottom, you have different filters you could apply. These are actually categories of filters. And then on the left, you have the layers. So you're going to add layers of filters, one on top of the other. And over on the left, when you do choose a filter, there'll be presets for each of those filters that you could choose from. Then over on the right-hand side, you have a histogram. And below that, you actually have parameters for each of those filters. Every filter has its own set of parameters that you could customize to your image. So let's just get started. The new feature they added this category called Particle Illusion. I'll click on that. And then you could see that there's categories within that category. So the filters that are in Particle Illusion, they have divided up into a number of different categories. If you just want to look at all of the filters that are in Particle Illusion, click on PI Complete. That's Particle Illusion Complete. And then you could see over here on the left-hand side, are all the filters that are in Particle Illusion. These are all new for Optics 2022. And you can see there's literally, I think, over a thousand new filters here. There's also new filters and improvements done to some of the other filters in this version as well. So it's not just Particle Illusion. Now, with that said, um, what do we want to do to this image? Well, it is a wintry image, so I want to add some snow to it. So I'm going to go just to the search bar and I'm going to type in snow and I want to add a blizzard. So we're going to click on blizzard and you can see that it added that filter to that image in the layers uh, panel. You can see it's the top layer. That's the snow that we just added. Now I mentioned there's parameters for each filter you added. Uh, the parameters will vary from filter to filter. It depends what the filter does. In this case, there's not a lot here, but I could go to, let's say, uh, composite and I could change the opacity, the tint color, the tint strength. So if I want to give maybe the, the um, snowflakes a bluish tint, I could do that. And how strong do I want it? Uh, below that, we have the transformation. Um, like, do you want it off center? You can see as I move it, it kind of moves the snowflakes left or right, up or down. If you find that you adjusted something, you don't like the way you adjusted it, and you just want to reset it, there's a little square with a dot in the middle on the right side of each of these adjustments. Just click that and that resets it back to the default setting. Scale, if you want to make the snowflakes larger, smaller, reset it. Uh, X, do you want to move it, stretch it out I should say. Uh, on the X axis you could do that as well. Um, y axis you could stretch it out or I should say kind of contract it as well. Um, rotate it, if you feel the need to rotate it. You can do that as well. So there's these different transformations, particle qualities, again, properties, I should say. And I should, again, I want to reiterate that these uh, different parameters will vary from filter to filter. So it depends what filter you're adding and what you can do to it. So I kind of like the snowflakes the way they are. I could come down to random speed maybe and try something different. There's a different look 
of where they lay. Kind of reset it. I kind of like it just at the default. That was good. So we added some snow to it. Now, I want to do something else. I want to add another filter to it. So to do that, I have to put it on its own layer. So I'm going to go over here and add a new layer. And you can see that's the current layer. And um, we're not going to do particle illusion. What I want to do is, um, where is it? You can see the different ones, diffusion and blurs. And let's look at just straight diffusion. You can see we added some diffusion to it. Over on the left-hand side, for that category called diffusion, there's a lot of different presets here. That happens to be burlap is the one that I put on, but you can see there's one called bread, one called clouds, one called fossil. So all these different kind of preset looks that you could get uh, for the image. Let's stay with burlap. I like that one. Then you could see on the right hand side are those parameters I talked about. And you could see how they're different for this filter. So I could change brightness and contrast in the temperature and so on. But I'm just going to keep that um, default setting. Also for this specific filter, there are some on-screen controls here. So you could kind of move this around. You can move the filter around. You could rotate it. You could uh, affect different aspects of it with, you know, just dragging on this like circle here. So again, it's just kind of all hit and miss. You kind of just practice with it. If you don't like what you did, you always could reset over here in the lower right hand corner. Um, you could delete, default, delete that layer and put a different layer on with a new filter on. So, you know, it's just kind of a lot of it is just try it out, see what it looks like. So I kind of like it the way it is. So I'm going to click apply. And then what it will do is it will save all this uh, to the file and open us back up in Lightroom. So that's when using Boris FX Optics 2022 as a Lightroom plugin. And um, I really haven't done a ton of videos on optics and not because I don't like it. It's just because there's so much you could do that I hadn't had time to take the time to properly learn all its different features so that I could do informative videos on it. But I am going to be taking the time to learn more about it and I'll be doing more videos on Optics 2022 going forward. I'll also work or I'll do a video on it as a standalone app and as a Photoshop plugin to show you how to use it in those different types of situations. So there's our image. Here's the before image. And there's the after image. So we jazzed it up a little bit with some snow and a little bit of a diffusion effect. So that's it. Boris Effects Optics 2022. Again, check the description below this video. I have a link to their website. I also have the discount code. It is 20% off. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon. <laughs>